In this video, I'll be talking about big numbers. And when I say big numbers, I mean big numbers. In fact, I challenge you to think of the largest number you can imagine and keep it in mind or write it down somewhere. And I guarantee you that the numbers that we'll be discussing at the end of this video will be vastly larger. In fact, it will be impossible to have these numbers literally in mind, because that would imply you'd need such a large amount of mass confined to the volume of your brain, such that it would spontaneously collapse into a black hole. Now, before we dive in, there are of course two constraints. First, infinity is not a real number, and therefore, it is not allowed. And the second constraint is that the number needs to be relevant, meaning that it needs to be a solution to a physical or mathematical problem. Otherwise, you could just say that you take this number and you add one to it. And to get to these magnificent numbers, let's start small and then go through the different types of notation that we have to represent large numbers. And this first brings us to the standard notation, the one that we generally use to write ordinary numbers. We have 10, 100, 1000, and when there are too many zeros, we separate them in triplets. However, we see that we quickly run into a wall here. If we have such large numbers that the number of zeros becomes very large, then we find ourselves copying zeros all the time and these numbers become very unreadable. And to overcome this obstacle, we move to the scientific notation, which is basically counting zeros. Because we know that for each zero added to a number, we basically multiply by 10. So instead of writing out all of the zeros for a very large number, what if we simply count them and then put them in the exponent of 10? As an example, we have 100, which we know is simply 10 times 10, which is equal to 10 to the power of 2. And this 2 basically says that we have a 1 with two zeros. Now 100 is not a very large number where this makes sense. But what if we have for instance 1 million? Well, we know that this is 6 zeros, so this simply becomes 10 to the power of 6. And if we take for instance this very large green number here, which is a number with 15 zeros, this simply becomes 10 to the power of 15. And this notation already allows us to tackle some bigger numbers. For example, we're closing in on 8 billion living people on Earth. This can simply be written as 8 times 10 to the power of 9, because 8 billion is an 8 with 9 zeros. Or, for instance, the age of the universe in seconds, which is 4.5 times 10 to the power of 17 which is quite a compact way to write 13.7 billion years in seconds. Another example would be that the mass of the Earth is roughly 6 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms, so a 6 with 24 zeros. And while we're talking about the Earth, this is 10 to the power of 50 atoms, which means that the number of atoms that make up the entire planet is a 1 with 50 zeros. But of course, we can do much better. What about the total number of particles in the entire observable universe? Well, this turns out to be 10 to the power of 80, so a 1 with 80 zeros. And just for fun, let's talk about the number 10 to the power of 100, a 1 with 100 zeros. This is called a Google, and it is indeed the number that the company Google based its name of. Alright, so these are already pretty large numbers. We're talking about the number of particles in the universe. However, we can go even bigger still. And this brings us to the factorial notation. And if you've done any combinatorics in your life, then you've probably come across this one. It's basically the exclamation mark. And while on the topic of combinatorics, let's take a first example. If you have a deck of cards with 52 cards, and you wonder in how many ways you can shuffle this deck of cards, then that would be 52 factorial, meaning 52 times 51 times 50 all the way to 1. Now, this number is roughly 8 times 10 to the 67th power. This means that there are more ways to shuffle a simple deck of cards than there are atoms in the entire Earth. This means in turn that if you have a particular deck of cards and it is shuffled, that it is probably in a combination that has never occurred in human history. And well, on the topic of humans, let's go to the next number, because 52 is a pretty small number, right? So let's say that the number of humans on the planet Earth is 7 billion. And what we're going to do now is to chain them up in a large human chain. 
this human chain would go across the globe 200 times. But that's not important here. What we're interested in is in how many different ways can we rearrange humans in this human chain. Well, in the same manner as the deck of cards, this would be 7 billion factorial. And this is actually such a large number that your calculator will not be able to give a result. Even if you plug it into your computer, it will not be able to give you a result. However, if we use some approximations of the factorial, we get that this is a number of 65.8 billion digits. And to put this into context, the number of atoms in the Earth was a number with 50 digits, 10 to the power of 50. If you would write this number out full in a text file, that would result in a size of 66 gigabytes. Now we could still use the scientific notation, because it would give us roughly 10 to the power of 65 billion 800 million. But here we again run into the same problem. We're still writing too many zeros. So we can write this as follows. 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 10, which is roughly 10 to the power of 10 billion. So we see that we get a tower here, a tower of exponents. And this brings us, as you might have guessed it, to the next level of big numbers. Because yes, we can go even bigger. And this brings us to the arrow notation, which is actually the notation that most people don't know, but it is here where the big numbers are. And to understand the pattern of the arrow notation, we will start very small. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. No surprises here. However, if we go one step further, we get multiplication, which is 3 multiplied by 3. This is simply 3 plus 3 plus 3. So 3 trees with the previous operation between them a plus sign, and this will be, of course, 9. Now, if we follow the pattern and we write 3 up arrow 3, then we know that this will be 3 trees with the multiplication sign between them. So 3 multiplied by 3 times 3. And this can also be written as 3 to the power of 3, which is, of course, 27. So if we look at the notation of 3 to the power of 3 and compare it with 3 up arrow 3, and we see that this up arrow basically says that the number right behind it needs to be lifted to the exponent. Now 27 is still a very small number and it seems that we've taken a step back from our big numbers. However, then we come to 3 double up arrow 3, which if we follow the pattern are 3 trees with the previous operation in between them, an up arrow. So we get 3 up arrow 3 up arrow 3. Now, because we know what 3 up arrow 3 is, we can write the brackets and we see that we get 3 up arrow, open the bracket, 3 up arrow 3. Now, 3 up arrow 3 is simply bringing the 3 to the exponent, so we get 3 up arrow 3 to the power of 3. Using again our definition of the up arrow, this means that we have to lift the 3 to the power of 3 into the exponent. This means that 3 double up arrow 3 is simply 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. Now, because 3 to the power of 3 is 27, we get 3 to the power of 27. And if we calculate this, this is roughly 7.6 trillion. Let's first look at the structure of this 3 double up arrow 3. We see that the first 3 is our base number. Then the double up arrow simply means that we'll get a tower of exponents. And then this last tree simply indicates the number of layers of our tower of exponents. In this case, three layers. So we get 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And this is the basic structure. Now we can apply this to 3 double up arrow 4. Since we know that the base number will be 3 and we have a double up arrow, so there will be a tower of exponents, and the 4 will indicate the number of layers, so 4 layers in this case. So we get 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. Now how do we get a grip on this number? Well, we know that this exponent, 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 3, is roughly 7.6 trillion. This means that we get 3 to the power of 7.6 trillion. And at this point, we've already reached the largest number up to now, because previously the largest number was a number with around 65 billion digits. Whereas here, we get 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 12, because we have 7.6 trillion in the exponent. Now this boils down to a number of 3.5 trillion digits. And of course, this is the point where things really get interesting, because of course, we can do better. 
what about three up arrow, up arrow, up arrow three? So three up arrows. Well, following the same pattern as before, this will be three trees with the previous operation in between them. In this case, the previous operation will be the double up arrow. So we have three double up arrow three, double up arrow three. And again, we can put brackets behind this last three double up arrow three to make sense of this number, because we know that this three double up arrow three is a number with 3.5 trillion digits. And now using our knowledge on what this double up arrow means, we know the following. We know that there will be a tower of exponents with a base number of three. However, now we know that the number of layers of this tower of exponents is three double up arrow three. This means that we will get 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 3 all the way up with a number of 7.6 trillion layers. And since we know from 3 double up arrow 4 that a 3 with only 4 layers of exponents is already a number with 3.5 trillion digits, then you can just imagine, or well, you can't, how large this number is with a tower of exponents of 7.6 trillion layers. And of course, following the general tendency of this video, we can go even further. But at this point, it becomes really absurd. Of course, we have three up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, three. So four up arrows. And following the same pattern, this means that we have three trees with the previous operation in between. So we have three, triple up arrow, three, triple up arrow, three. Now, since we've seen how escalated things can become by just adding an arrow, this becomes a stupidly big number. And in fact, this number is defined as G0. Now, this subscript 0 might indicate that this is only a first of a series. And well, indeed, you are right. This is only the first number in a series of large numbers. So this would beg the question, if G0 is 3 quadruple up arrow 3, then what is G1? Now, you would expect that this would be 5 up arrows, extending the pattern from 4 up arrows. However, this is not the case. Just have a guess how many up arrows separate these two trees. It's not 5, it's also not 6, it's also not 1 million. In fact, the number of up arrows between these two trees is G0. Indeed, G0 up arrows separating these two trees. And G0 itself was already a stupidly large number, which I failed to represent in any tangible way. In fact, if we go back a bit, then we know that 3 triple up arrow 3 was already a 3 with a tower of exponents of 7.6 trillion layers. This brought us to 3 quadruple up arrow 3, for which we didn't have any tangible way of representing this number, and now we take this stupidly large number and we take the number of arrows between these trees. And this is G1. Of course, and you can already guess G2. Well, G2 is just two trees separated by G1 up arrows. And this same game can be played up to G64. And G64 is then called capital G, or Graham's number. And as promised, this number will be much, much larger than any number you would have imagined at the start of this video. For example, if you take every particle in this universe, which was 10 to the power of 80 particles, and you inflate it to the size of the universe, and you would fill each of these universes with lead, then they would still not weigh as much as Graham's number, not by a large amount. And well, one more thing before we go, Graham's number, however large it is, we know it ends on a 7.